of the Wonderlust Live event. Um, this is, well, it's, it's a four day extravaganza. So it is Monday here in Australia. It is 5 p.m. And which means I think it's about 7 a.m. in London and pretty late over in America and Canada. But uh, thank you for joining me here. And um, what we're doing today, so if you've joined my other Wonderlust Lives, I did uh, one on Saturday, then one on Sunday, where we were doing art journal stamping. So the first one I did collage papers, like creating stamped collage papers that you can use in your art journals. And then yesterday we did stamped borders. So there was lots of ideas there for you to create stamped borders. And then today, um, we are making some inky art journal backgrounds. So what that means is I'll be using different water soluble products. So such as ink pads or watercolors or pigment um, uh, sticks, various other things. So what I um, need you to do, if you wanna play along with me here on the video is to get out something that is water soluble from your studio. So I'm going to show you um, just one or two techniques on how to use them, but then I want to show you just different um, little uh, products that you can use with that technique to create some really nice inky art journal backgrounds. So if you've just stumbled upon this video, um, my name's Rachel Gregg and I am a photographer and mixed media artist based in Australia. And so what we and on this YouTube channel, I share videos on art journaling, travel journaling, uh, daily journaling, everyday journaling as well. So lots of journal um, options and lots of travel stuff because I like to travel a lot. So uh, if you're interested in all of that, then yes, please subscribe to my YouTube channel while you are here. I'm just reading some of the comments here. There's um, uh, 2 a.m. in Tennessee, I think it was, and in Virginia. Thank you so much for either staying up late or um, getting up really, really early. Hi, Novita, I haven't seen you in a long time. So miss going up to Queensland, haven't been there for a while. Uh, hi, Lynn, 3 a.m., Nova Scotia in Canada. Thank you so much for joining me in the middle of the night. So um, that's, that's uh, yeah, I'm not the only one up past my bedtime in Virginia. Yes, you're not. But I really appreciate it. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, couldn't miss it. Well, thanks, Jay. And um, if you are, or we, there will be the replay. The replay will happen. So hopefully those who are unable to um, join us right now, if they're in those parts of the world, you can watch the replay. So and it, I'll just keep it on my YouTube channel. So that's fine. So just quickly, just about the Wonderlust Live, if you have stumbled upon this on my YouTube channel or um, just while you're scrolling YouTube or something, so Wonderlust Live is a four-day extravaganza where we're celebrating International Artists Day. So there's a few teachers who are teaching in next year's Wonderlust, so that's Wonderlust 2023, and we've come together for this weekend to celebrate International Artists Day and share with you some techniques for how to use things in your art journals. So you can join up for Wonderlust Live for free. So there's a link in the YouTube description below on this video where you can sign up for free and then you'll see all the videos or you get the links to all of the videos for this whole weekend. So I've done three videos and there'll be other artists. I think there's like 20 different lives in total. So there's 20 different videos all on different techniques. And I've watched as many as I can so far. I will also be going back and watching some of the replays because a lot of them weren't really good for Australian time. So, um, but, uh, so the replays are there. So definitely sign up because uh, that's for free. And then if you do want to join Wonderlust for next year, I'll be one of the teachers and I'll be sharing some ideas for art journaling. And there's a link, there's a special price right now until the end of October. Uh, for 99 US dollars um, and then it will go to its regular price um, of 175 US dollars, which is still fantastic value. <laughs> Sorry, I'm choking on my words. The, um, the value you get in Wonderlust is really incredible. Even from one video, it's uh, definitely worth that um, I've been doing Wonderlust ever since it started, sometimes as a teacher, sometimes as a student. 
and it's it's just fantastic value i just love all the ideas that are shared throughout and obviously when i'm a teacher i like to share lots of ideas with you on stamping in your art journals so today it is time to get inky and uh what i need you to do is just grab out some water soluble supplies so whether it's uh inks or any of those other things I said but what I'll do now is I'll flip the camera I'll show you what supplies I've got on my table what journals we've got and then we'll get these hands which are nice and neat or clean right now we'll see how inky we can get them by the end of the video so let me switch this around okay and I'll just sit that there and is, uh, is anyone going to be playing along who's in the live chat right now? Just let me know there in the comments. I'll try and keep up with the comments as we go. Uh, but if you've got any questions, pop them in the live chat. Or if you're watching this on replay, then uh, definitely leave a comment down below on the video. And I'll um, pop in and answer those questions as well. Okay, so on my table here right now, I'll just move this journal aside. Because I'll talk about journals in a second. But first, I just want to talk about um, ink pads and things that you can use to create uh, the little inky backgrounds that we'll be doing. So I'm just getting some of these out. So these are all water-based ink pads. So that's just, I've just got a couple of brands out here. So it doesn't matter what brand you're using. You just need to get ones that are water reactive. So what I've done here is I've got out some distress ink. I've got a couple of oxide ink pads. I'll put these down here. There's room on the video so you can see that. And I've also got some sprays as well. So I'll just sit those down there for now. And I'll just talk about... You can't really see that. Let me move that up there. There we go. Now you can see that a bit better. So I'll just talk about um, products that you can use for these or to create these uh, inky backgrounds. So Distress Oxide, they're water reactive. Distress Ink is water reactive. Um, the Wendy Vecchi blendable dye inks are water reactive. And then of course, watercolors are water reactive. And same with Distress Spray Stain. Now I've just got the spray stains out at the moment but you could use the oxide spray, you could use Dilutions ink spray, uh, there's quite a lot of other ink sprays, and then also any um, just like inks, like artist inks, there's other inks that can also be moved around as well with water and mixed with water. So, But I just got these sprays out because uh, it's the same thing, they're just different sprays, but I just want to show you a few different techniques uh, with these ones, but I want you to see what's in your stash because this is what these videos are all about is to show you what you can do with your stash um, or some things you may not have in your stash like but hopefully You've at least got one of these things So it doesn't mean it needs to be these particular brands of ink pad, but hopefully you have um some ink in your stash that will be water reactive. Pigment ink. Now, Arlene asked, is pigment ink water reactive? Now, uh, some of it, yes. So, because um, these ones here, these are a distress oxide. They're a pigment dye blend. Um, so, you can try the pigment inks and see how water reactive. The dye inks are more water reactive, though. So, and um, and so you'll see when I start creating with these just how much of a water reactive uh, ink they are and watercolors again they'll be really good to use as well. So what I like to um, encourage you to do is if you are wondering if some of your supplies are water reactive then do this technique just on a scrap piece of paper and I'll explain how or what will happen if it's not water reactive and then you'll know okay that's not water reactive and that was a nice little experiment and then you'll know and then you could even make a um like a swatch um like a swatch thing for yourself just so then you know what is water reactive and what isn't Okay, so what I'm doing now is, sorry, I was just reading the comments, but um, what I'm doing now is just showing you a couple of journals. So what you need aside from your water reactive uh, products is something to work on. So what I'm using is a couple of different journals, um, or you could just use loose paper. 
and I've got some other looser paper here as well. So I just, I'm using small journals here today just for the video so it will actually fit in frame. But you can also use these, these techniques in larger journals as well. And I'm going to show you at the end of the video some examples in some of my larger journals of this same technique. So what I've got here, so I just wanna show you three different ones here. So this is that Dilusions Dialogue uh, that, that I was working in the other day. The other day we did, remember yesterday, we did these stamped borders. And then this journal's got quite a lot of inky backgrounds in here already, because I've been playing with some products and that's what I like to do with, you know, just seeing how certain um, colorants just work on this paper. And then there's, I'm just using a small Dilutions journal. So this has just got really beautiful paper. Now it's the same paper that's in the dialogue. The dialogue's just a, a bit thinner than the actual journal pages. These ones here are really nice and thick. So you can hear that. So then that means that it, it's just beautiful paper to work on with all this, uh, the water mediums as well. And it's designed to be used really well with the spray inks, like uh, the dilution sprays. So that's really good to work on. This here, this is the Strathmore Bristol. So I'll just show you the front of this one. Strathmore Bristol Smooth. It also takes watercolour mediums and water mediums. You can see here some really nice... Um, uh, some backgrounds there as well. So, and, and this here, this is just a stamped border that was already pre-done. If you watched my video yesterday on the stamped art journal borders, uh, this is similar to one that we did on that video. So if you want to see, uh, yeah, how we can do that, but I'm going to do a background on top of this. So just to mix it in and show you how, if you have already stamped some borders, then you might like to do this technique to add more color to your borders that you've already pre-stamped. Okay, so I'll just move these away. So again, just talking about journals, the I've also got a square Dilutions journal. This one hasn't been started yet, so I might do some backgrounds in that one. And I also have some loose sheets here out of the large Dilution journals as well. So you can just use um, any sort of substrate that you have on hand that will work really well with uh, water-soluble products? Yes, you can. So Roni asked, can you use water-soluble crayons, pencils, like ink tents um, and watercolour pencils? Yes, you can. Scribble sticks, watercolour pencils, um, pigment sticks like the Neo colours, anything that's reactive with water. So if it's reactive with water, then you can do this technique. And that's why um, I'm encouraging you to try or get one of those products out to play along with this video and then just see how it goes. And watercolour paper, so this is really nice textured watercolour paper. Um, so that will, I have this on hand just like pre-cut size because when we start working, we're going to have leftover ink. And this is really good if you're a card maker. So just because I'm working in art journals, it doesn't mean you only do this technique for art journals. You can also do this for card making. So, um, so that's why it's always nice to have some extra pieces on hand. But if you have a watercolour journal, like an actual journal, and you want to play inside that, by all means do that. Um, but it's also good to have some spare little cardstock on hand. Right, so let's start playing. All right, so what, and also paper towel. You need a paper towel. This stuff gets messy. <laughs> so, and I've got everything really neat here and I just know that we're going to get ink everywhere and that's the fun of it. So let's start with some Wendy Vecchi inks. So what I suggest is grabbing out probably two or three or four um, ink pads. I will use these ones that are kind of in a same sort of colour family. So this is just to keep it nice and easy for you to begin with uh, if you've never done this technique before. And, and that's because if these mix together, then it won't be too much of an issue. You're still going to just get like a warm um, colourant with these. Um, I've also got some that are cools. 
So you could either go and choose some cool colors or you could choose some warm colors and then we'll do one where we actually mix it up. So what we're doing is going to press the ink pad straight down onto our nonstick craft sheet. So this craft sheet here is Teflon coated, so it's a smooth surface. Now you might have a silicon mat. Um, if you don't have anything that's smooth like this, uh, I'm trying to think you can use like an acrylic block, uh, like a stamping block. Even if you have a stamp platform, you could use the lid of that. You just need something where it's kind of smooth and it's also like a non-porous surface. So if you've got something like that in your craft room, then yeah, grab that out and then we can use this as our palette. Uh, if you've got like a, a big palette, even palette paper, so you might have a pad of palette paper, that will also work for this. So I'm just putting out some ink now. I've put out more than I need because my surface is, you know, kind of that big. And I like to do it about the width of what my paper is going to be just because that means then I know that I have enough ink, at least if I tapped it straight down, that it will cover it. Um, but I know once I add water to this, and I'm just using a spritzer bottle. So this spritzer bottle is just filled with water. And then I'm spritzing this ink and you can see how that ink is pooling up. Now that's reacting with that water and it's making it into kind of like a watercolour. So it's blending out there. So if I add more water, you can see how those water droplets are getting bigger and bigger. So that means I'm adding more water to that. So if we want to go straight into our journal, I'm just going to pick a page here that's blank. And I'm just going to lay it flat or make sure that it's a little bit flat. And then we want to press down, twist it up, and then you've got a little background. Now you can see there's tons of water here. And again, it's going to create a mess. This is going to be very messy. And it will get onto other pages in your journal. So if you want to be careful, then you could put paper underneath. So if you've got, I'll just grab this out to show you. It just becomes, I mean, these are quite large, but it just becomes more cumbersome if you wanted to like put this underneath in between the pages here. I'm not gonna bother because this is one of those journals or most of my journals are ones where if it goes onto the next page, I don't mind. It just means I've added ink to that page already. So you can see here how the colors are blending. I don't wanna blend this much anymore because it means I'll lose that yellow there. So I'm just going to drip this down. You can add a bit more water down here if you want to drip that down there. And then see how much ink we've got left. And I've got a little bit left here on that page. So I can just tap this side and then get more ink. Now that's got a ton of ink and it's really, really wet. Uh, I'm just going to set this aside. I don't want to use the heat gun too much in this video just because of the noise. Uh, so what I can do is use a paper towel to move across that. But once I do that, it'll lift up a lot of the ink and see how that becomes a bit lighter. So you can do that or you can use a heat tool or you can just set that aside to dry. I'm going to set this side to, uh, set this one aside to dry, just up there. And then I'm going to get my leftover piece of watercolour and I'll just show you how I can just mop up some of this ink. So you can see there you can do that. The other thing you can do is get a brayer and then use some of this ink and then brayer across to create another type of background. But because all of these inks are now blended, I'm only getting basically the one colour. So see how that's just all like little oranges here and like pinky red. So I'm just going to set that aside. So those backgrounds there uh, like a really nice first layer. Okay, now I'm just going to grab a paper towel and I'm finished with this ink, so I'm just going to lift everything up and then use a paper towel to wipe all this clean. And then we're good to go and we've cleaned our palette, just wipe off the brayer. Now, because everything is water-based, the cleanup is really simple. You just need a paper towel, maybe a baby wipe, and then we're clean. I mean, um, our little paper towel there is all dirty, but um, and our hands are starting to get nice and inky. And then we can just set that aside. Now I'm gonna bring my journal back and show you this. And I'm just gonna tap it dry a bit more because I then wanna work on it a little bit more for this one. 
And for this here, I just want to add a bit more color. So I want to add something a bit darker. So I'm just going to do one color here. So that was the carnation red. So that's just a little bit darker. I'm not going to add as much water to that. And I'm just going to add no other color. So what that means is, and I'm just going to tap it rather than smooshing it around this time and see how now it's just adding a little bit of color here and there. And because I didn't add as much water, you can see now I'm getting all the little splotches and now I'm getting this kind of texture on the background. So it means you can then layer up your backgrounds and see how that's just adding a little bit more detail to your background. And I've gone over my nice little yellow area. That's okay. I can do, I can dry that, add more yellow on top if I want to and let that go. Okay, and then that can just dry. And I'll dry this up with a paper towel again. Okay, so that's using the warm colors there with the Wendy Vecchi inks. Let's now use some of the cool ones. So this is Prickly Pear, Garden Patina. These inks are really beautiful colors. I just love the colors that Wendy comes out with. So I've just got a few more ink colors there. And Again, spritzing with water. And then I'm just gonna grab a different page in this. So this journal is going to be nice and wet and inky by the end of it. Just move those out of the way. And smoosh it around. And then you can see how quick and easy it is to get your background. And I'm just gonna leave that one like that because I really like how the color blend has happened and I really love all these little splashes of color. So you can still leave a little bit of white space if you want or you can completely cover it if you're not wanting to press it down. Like if you wanted to completely cover that but you don't want to press it back down into your ink, then I'll just grab a water brush. You can use a water brush and blend this out with a water brush if you wanted to completely make that cover the entire art journal page. So, oh, Stephanie, I just read your comment, your watercolour paper curled up. Well, that's that's because there's a lot of water in what you were doing, but that's okay. It, once it dries, it should actually flatten back out. So the, the good thing about watercolour paper, it is intended to take a lot of water, but sometimes it will like buckle up but then once it dries, it will flatten out. And then even if it's dried and it's got a, still a little bit of a buckle in it, just put it under some heavy books and then it should flatten out really nicely. So, but don't put it under the books until it's completely dry. Otherwise it might, you know, wreck your book. <laughs> so, but anyway, so here's our other little um, background here. Again, I've got more leftover bits and pieces. I'll just add a smidgen of water there grab another one of my watercolor sheets here, and then again, just make a simple background here using up that ink. Now, if I wanted to add, remember this background here, this is almost dry. If I wanted to add a couple of these splotches, it'll be a different, different color on top. And see here now how you can um, build up your layers with different colors. So you just need to be careful with this because your first background needs to be dry. Um, and then because this next inking will kind of reactivate the bottom ink. So it could turn into a little bit of mud. It just depends on what your color choices are. But you can see here how even though some of it's blended in, um, the green and the pink is still showing as different colors and then you've got like bright greens and bright blues as well so that's just building up your backgrounds and you can do that in your art journal pages as well but i'm done with this color now and i just want to show you with let's move on now we'll do some distress oxide ink so whoop, this um oxide ink you can see how now it's like kind of um more opaque these ink colors. And that's because it's got pigment ink in it as well as the dye ink. And so that, to me, I, I kind of call it like milky, milky ink. So if I've moved this up a bit, you couldn't see that last color. So they're just a little bit more opaque and that's because of that pigment and you get some really nice effects. 
So this time round, I'm gonna go straight into this small dilutions journal. Again, we're just going to spritz it with water. And I've got a lot of ink here and see how that's pooling up again with that water. It might be a little bit hard for you to see when it's so um, far down, but hopefully you can see what I mean. And this is this is the tricky part because the um, the I'm actually using a full journal, which is quite lumpy, you know. So this is where the smaller journals and see how that. Oh, look at that! That's beautiful. Love it, love it. But what I was yeah trying to say is that it's hard to get. A good connection with the paper and you can see there how I got one side but the other side didn't connect because I was um, just pressing on one side but you can just lift up that side press that one down and then you've got your journal backgrounds and look at that it's, it looks like paint pouring and it's just so simple just a couple of ink pads a little bit of water and then you can create your journal backgrounds so I'm just gonna set that one aside to dry because I like it as is. And now again, I've got more ink. I'm gonna use more watercolor paper. I've got lots of little backgrounds that I'm making here that'll be great for cards and other little projects. I'm gonna leave that one and I've got a lot of ink. So this one here, remember my braid background that I did? I'm now going to pick up some more of this and go over the top. And I don't have a space there. I'll just do it in the middle. It doesn't matter if the back of it gets a bit of ink on it as well. So the little brayers are just a really fun way to get these real streaky look and just a great way to use up all this excess ink. You don't want to waste ink. Here we go. And check that out. So that's the Yes, I just saw Maggie's comment. She needs, she, you were just saying that uh, you need to let go of the fact that it bleeds onto the other pages or the edges of the other pages of the journal. Um, it, that is one of the things about this technique. It is very, very inky and uh, ink does tend to get everywhere and it does go onto other pages of your journal. But um, as I mentioned, if you really want to try and not do that like if you've got pages in your journal that are like you know they're already done you don't want to um, put extra ink onto them and I understand that because I've got finished pages in my journal as well so therefore I'd try and probably not use as much water um, and try and get more of this splotchy background rather than going for the full um, inky background then what I would suggest is just try and get like a little splotchy background. And that way, uh, the less ink you use, the less chance you've got of going on to other pages and the less water that you use. It just means you'll just get more splotches rather than having it as a full blended thing. So try that out. Um, and also the other thing is with this technique, if you want to, like these dilution journals are perfect for um, just using for things like this and it, you know, if you want to just use one journal and just know that all the pages are going to be inked in some way, and then what I would suggest is doing all the pages before you go on to the next stage. So, for instance, um, this is what I love doing about, like, inky backgrounds is you could spend, you know, an afternoon, even if it's only 10 minutes, you can see how many we've done already and um, we've only been going for a little while here, and how many um, we've done just in that little time. And, you know, you could fill this whole journal just in one afternoon, and then you've, you've got the whole pages already done, and then you can just let it dry, and then you can come back and then add the other stamping, so the other, um, or the other mixed media, whatever it is that you like to do in your journals, because the other two videos that I was showing with the stamped borders, uh, you could now just leave this and stamp a border across the bottom and then add your journaling or quote or pictures or whatever it is that you want to add to it and then it's finished. But the inking part, the part where you get your hands messy and where ink's everywhere, that can be already done. So the other thing is um, distress inks. So distress inks work in the same way. Let's do a purple one. We haven't done a purple one yet, so I'll do, show you this one quickly. Seedless, a bit of worn lipstick. I mean, this is where it's really fun. You just get out all your colours and have a bit of a play. Let's pack away the oxides and water. 
bit of a spritz. This time I won't go so heavy on the water. We'll grab, actually I'm going to grab a new journal because that one's getting quite full of water there. So we'll just, here's another fresh dilutions. We'll start from the beginning somewhere. Okay, and then pressing it down and pressing it down and then lifting it up. So you can see here, because I didn't use as much water, you've got all these little streaks. I really like that because it gives me, it's kind of gives me a little, um, like it's a starting point. It means then when I come back in, I could do a title down the side here. Like you can use these other little extra pieces for different journaling. When you do, if you're doing daily journaling, you might want to do your date and use this as the template for, you know, Friday or something like that, you know. Um, there's, there's different ways where sometimes just doing one pass of your colour and then just leaving it and then just go, okay, I'm waiting for that to dry and then I'll see how I feel the next day or whenever you get to that page. If, um, if you want to check out uh, one of my videos, um, there's a December daily video on my YouTube where I was setting it up. So it's the setup for December daily for this year. And, and I showed how I did that. And then I'd go up another couple of pages and I'd do another inky one, another inky one. And then I left it. And then when I got to that page in December, this is what I was starting with. And then I went and journaled on that day. So it's a really fun little thing, especially if you don't know or, you know, you've got 10 minutes in your studio and you don't know what to do, but you want to be creative in some way, then this is just a great way to do it. Just get out some inks, get out some paper, create some backgrounds. So, okay, so I'm just going to put this aside. Now let's use some watercolours. So I've done the ink pads. And then now I want to show you how you can use watercolours. So here's a little watercolour pan. And uh, this is one of the Prima watercolour pans. I've just got more watercolours in there because what I did was um, I changed all of my pans so it was kind of like a rainbow of colour. And then I've got other ones that have got all the greens in them and the other ones. But this is just one that I pulled out. And what you can do with this, I'll just get a paintbrush here. And what we want to do is we want to put some of this pigment onto my mat. And so basically it's the same thing as... Um, using those ink pads. So I'm just going to grab a bit of ink, sorry, a bit of watercolour, and I'm just going to run it on here. So my brushes are wet and that's what's picking up this watercolour. So I haven't, I mean, these watercolours were a little bit wet. You can spritz it once or twice. You don't want to make it too wet because we're not adding the water to it just yet. We're just adding as much of that um, pigment as we can to our craft mat. So I'm just going to pick up some of this yellow, add it next to it, and then do a bit more. Oh, a bit of red was going in there, but just keep brushing over it until you've got that and made a nice little clean thing. Okay, I'm just going to go with those two colours. So my little brushes here have got that. I can just put that back in the water so they don't um, dry. And again, we're just, this is when we're now going to add our water to that watercolour. And then we will grab a journal and I'll grab this one here, the Dilutions Journal. And then down again and lift up, down again, lift up. And you can see how the watercolours and look how vibrant they are as well. And then lift up and then again, lift up. So you can see here how you can just keep going down to see where you're adding um, some colour. And because I didn't see how I only had those two little strips versus the big lot of ink pad that I had, or I had like all those ink colours, so it means that I needed to go back and back and back again to continue to add colour to this page to cover it up. So if you don't want to add too much colour all at once and you want to be a little bit in more control, then the watercolours is a great way to go. Uh, you could just use like one strip of ink pad or two strips of ink pad as well um, to just be in more control of your colour if you just want to see how you're going as you go. And the beauty with the watercolours, I mean, if I just give you a little bit of a close-up, see all these beautiful like splashes of colour and texture. Like we've got all the vibrancy here, but once I 
got most of the colour on this page and then I was picking up all the little leftover bits and pieces. So every pass that you do or every pickup that you do of these inks is just going to give you a different effect. And this is what's so addictive about this because you could just go all day, honestly. It could, you could just go all day and do this again and again and again. Um, if you wanted to blend out some of this ink, again, just grab one of your paint brushes that's a little bit wet. And again, you can sit here and color in, move this um, watercolor around if you want to, just pick up some of that and uh, make it so that it doesn't have that manila um, background, blend it all out. Now remember all of a, these watercolor products are continuously reactive with water. So even if I came back tomorrow, and wanted to muck around with this, you still can. So I'm just blending this out just to kind of show you how it can still be blended out. And you'll just get the layers just depending on what's dry and what isn't. And So there you go. Okay, beautiful. That's just softened that now just by making that ever so slightly a lighter color of all those pinks that I was using. So there we go. So that's just another um, uh, way you can do that. So yes, um, I was just seeing Yvonne's question. Do you ever spritz the page with water after or before the ink or watercolor has dried? Yes, you can. And this is why I was waiting for some of these to dry. Uh, we'll go back to one of these other pages. So this is where, and if you wanted to work on one page, um, you can dry them with a heat tool in between. So I'm just gonna dry this one uh, so there's a couple of there's a couple of answers to that question, but I just want to show you this one first. So I'm just going to um, so just bear with this noise. I'm just going to use the heat gun just for a moment, just to dry this page up a little bit. So I'm just using, I was just patting my fingers around just to see how much that was dry as I was going. But just be careful with your fingers. You don't want to burn your fingers. Okay, so this is basically dry. Um, it's not 100% dry. I would probably dry it a little bit more. So what you can do, if you want to add sort of more water droplets to this after the fact, like that's dried now, and do you want to add more water or do you want to add more colour? Um, but if you want to add more water droplets, what you can do is with this water bottle, just spritz a little bit of it into your fingers and then flick it onto your background. Now, if you spritzed it directly onto the page, you might just spritz too much water onto that page and it'll just be one big puddle. So this is why just spritzing a little bit like into your fingers there. So you can just see my fingers are a little bit wet. Then flicking it, it means then only a couple of that um, flicks of that water will then go onto the page and it won't be one big um, blob of water. Let that sit for a minute. So what that water is doing now, it's reacting with that ink. And you can do this with your watercolours or with the Distress ink or the, uh, the Wendy Vecchi inks or just try it with whatever medium that you're using it with and then using your paper towel and then pat that off and then you'll get some little water droplets or you'll be able to see the water droplets come up there on your page. So you can only just see them there. I haven't dried it off completely, but you can see some water droplets there coming off there. Now, the darker the ink that you're using, the more that will react. So I'll just let that sit there for a moment and then you can pat that off and then you'll get more water action. So you can see that there on the greens, how you're just getting a little bit of um, water droplets there on your page. If you wanted to add water first to your journal and then add like sprays on top or something, you can do that, but often, or the inks on top, but often it's easier to do it on the mat and then add it here to your page. So just talking about sprays, that's the other last one that I wanted to show you is using ink sprays. So of course, ink sprays, you can spray directly onto your page. 
So that's usually what they're intended for is to spray directly onto your page, either just as a, um, just as a plain background but what I wanted to show you in this video is again, that same technique using this uh, craft mat, but instead using sprays. So, and also your brayer. So you can spray a little bit here onto your craft mat. I'm just using the same um, color family here. And you don't need a huge amount, like one or two sprays of each color is ample because it's already got a lot of liquid in it already. You don't necessarily need to use water in it. Um, I'm just going to get another page out of this dilutions journal. That's not completely dry, so when I flip it over, it might go onto another page, but that's okay. So with this one here, I'll show you what it looks like when I don't add water, and then we'll do one with water if you want to see how much um, it reacts with water. Okay, so now I'm just going straight onto the page here. And again, similar kind of effect, and just depends on where you... Now, using these journals, it's, it's kind of a bit clunky, but I wanted to show you why you would do that because it then means that you can just go straight into your journals. So you can see here how I've got quite a lot of, you know, beautiful colour here with those inks. They blend in really nicely together. So if we spray on again, and again, if you want to add more spray, whoops, and my sprays are getting quite low because I've used them quite a lot. So it's, um, there we go, that one's spraying quite nicely. And then this one, add a bit more there. Now I've got a bit more ink than what I had last time. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. I want this one to be really, really, really inky. And again, we'll just go into this journal again. And then laying down. Now I'm going into not the center of the journal. So it is one page. I can feel it. One page is connecting a bit more than the other. And you can see the journal's kind of sticking to the mat. But you can still see how blended that is. So that was because I used more ink and more water. But so you'll see all this excess down here and that will go into, or it could go into some of the other pages. Uh, but again, if you're worried about that, the trick for that is to use less spray and less water and you'll just um, keep moving your journal page back into the ink. But I mean, I'm loving this. I just love how it all blends together. It looks like the ocean, especially when you use colors like this. I'm gonna set that one aside to dry. Uh, the sprays are really, really good to use with the brayers. So again, and I mean, you can do this in a journal page. Let's put that one aside. Let's go into a journal page. I want to show you how it looks when you go into a journal page. Move this to the side. Okay, so I'm just going straight into the journal and you can see how nice it is, especially on the Dilutions um, journals because they are flat pages. It just shows up these little inky drips really really good and because these I'm just using up leftover ink all of those colors have blended together so I've basically just got the one uh, mixed color now but that's okay remember this is just a background and it's just some a starting point to work off on your journals so there's a little inky background there using up leftover ink. And I mean, you've almost done the whole page by the time that's happened and we're just using leftover ink. So this page here, a little bit dry, but I reckon we add some of these little drips. And because it's the same color family, looks amazing. It looks like it was just a part of the, um, the project. Okay, so let's move it around here. And if your ink is getting a little bit dry, you can still add more water. And all that'll do is just gonna dilute that spray color a bit, but give you more of a inky run here when you're doing your brayering. Okay, so that's just added another layer to that page. So you can see how just in the one uh, sitting of you just mucking around with inks, I mean, I've got um, art journal pages all here ready to go now. So that's using the sprays. Now, if you wanted to use things like pigment sticks or the watercolour uh, pencils, so the watercolour pencils and things um, are a little bit tricky if they have like a, um, yeah, like it's all got the wood around it. So it means you need to, you know, really use the tip of the pencil. But the things like the scribble sticks are a lot easier 
um, to use because the whole thing is a pigment stick and you can actually rub it on here, uh, wet it and rub it on there. So um, I was just seeing if I had them handy, but I don't. But uh, you can just rub them on there and then add water and do the same thing. So let's just show you the finished piece. So basically what I'd love for you to do is just grab out your supplies, anything that is water reactive. Now my little pages here, some of them are still a little bit wet, but I'll still just show you and put them all out here for you to see. And, um, and then, and here's our other little backgrounds here with all the leftover pieces. So it's just a lot of fun to create quick and easy art journal backgrounds. So I just want to show you now just a couple of other pages that I was talking about. So when this page here that I've done in a large dilutions journal, I'll try and show you the whole thing in one go, but you can see here how I used the warm colours on the left, and this was with spray inks, and then I used the cool colours on the right, and then held them up and dripped them down either side to then create those little lines that I could journal inside. So that's just one way you can use it as well, directly straight, directly into your journals. And the other thing, here's some other pages here I just wanted to show you. So again, these are some of my uh, little daily journals that I did a few years ago. And again, you can just add some, let it drip down. It just adds some fun to your journal pages. And then here's another one. And this is one, you know how I said in those ones where you don't have to cover the entire background. Like all of these little white um, spaces like really show through and they're really fun to do. So when I did this one, see how I've done like the pinks and the greens together. And then I've done the same thing over here. And you can see how all of these little splotches are because I didn't have a lot of ink. Um, but I ended up just leaving it as is on that page because it, I just really liked it and I didn't even want to cover it up. I just wanted to leave it as is. So they're just really nice uh, ways to add colour to your journals. So I hope this has given you some fun ideas on how you can spend an afternoon or spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever time you have available to create some inky backgrounds in your journals. And then it's, that one's a painted one, but see this one here, that's using the new um, Distress Ink Colour Uncharted Mariner uh, with some other colours as well. It's just a lot of fun just to create um, some journal backgrounds. Now this page here, um, this one here started off with an inky background and then it shows you how you can then layer it up and using some stencils on top and the uh, some quotes, some stamping all around there. So there is a video showing how I've created this from start to finish on the Darkroom Door YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed, I do a lot of videos over there on Darkroom Door as well. So you're welcome to go and see more tutorials there. Um, but that same technique of using these inky backgrounds for your journal pages. So this journal here, I've just got lots of inky ones. So hopefully you've got some water soluble products. So whether it is the ink pads um, or distress inks or oxide inks, it could be watercolors, the scribble sticks, neo colors, uh, watercolor pencils, any kind of or ink sprays. So you've got ink sprays, oxide sprays, any kind of water soluble product. Um, and just use that. So what I was going to show you now, this is just one little hot tip for the end, is I've got the archival links here. So these are not water soluble, okay? And I just wanna show you when you're doing your test for if it is a water soluble product. So put it on your mat like this and spritz water on it and see how it doesn't pull up. You can see the water is sitting on top of that ink and then if you lift it off, see how nothing happens? Nothing is going on that cardstock and the ink is still staying on the mat. That's how you can tell it's not a water-soluble product. So if you're wondering, is my 
product or what I've got on my table, is it water soluble? If you can't read the label, if the label doesn't say it on the label, that's how you test it. Just smush a bit on your mat, spritz a bit of water. If nothing happens, then yeah, get your cardstock, try and lift it off. Not very exciting, is it? <laughs> so that's because it has a different purpose. So this is why it's always really fun to test out your supplies to see what they can do, see what they can't do. But when you do have water-soluble products, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of ink and a lot of fun and, most importantly, some really fantastic art journal backgrounds. So thank you again so much for joining me this afternoon and also for the last couple of days. Uh, it's been a heck of a lot of fun. Um, creating with you and I uh, hope you've enjoyed all of the techniques that I've been sharing and hopefully it's inspired you to get out your supplies and get out your art journal pages or your art journals whether it's the little ones the medium ones or the small ones and all the way up to the big ones and I do encourage you to use these techniques even in the large Dilutions journals or the large Strathmore journals uh, or watercolour journals because, I mean, I was just trying to do it small just to kind of show you, but if you've got some space, it's it's a heck of a lot of fun. So I just, in, um, if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll um, see what else I come up with. So that would be great to have you along board for that. And for Wonderlust, Wonderlust Live is still going for another day. So there's still, I think, five or six more videos after mine. So be sure to join Wonderlust Live if you haven't already so you get all the links to the videos. And, um, and then also, if you haven't joined Wonderlust for next year and you would like to, then there is a link down in the description of this video. It is on sale, like I mentioned, until... Um, October 31st at that special price um, and then after that it will go up to its regular price but even at the regular price still a fantastic value class I just love it I love it I love it I just think um, the teachers the ideas everything it just keeps us creating which is what we need so again thank you so much I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next video or I may also, if you're in Wonderlust next year, I'll see you there as well. Thanks, everybody. Bye.